So I know I usually use these introductory spots to just kind of make a joke and ease into the video, but today I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported the fundraiser from last week. We ended up raising just over $25,000, which was then matched to $50,000 for Trans Lifeline. So thanks, folks. It means the world. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today Max has asked me to play with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Um, there's a lot of text here. You can spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. We're gonna ignore that part, that part doesn't really matter. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. That can get into some very, very strange territories and is going to do some cool things this league, I think. And by tapping this card, you can exile a card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one plus one or plus one plus one or yeah, put a plus one plus one or on target creature you control. So this allows you to do some very strange things. Within the context of the deck list today, the most important part is the plus one plus one counter, but as you're going to see in a minute, the other mode is very relevant too. The reason we're going to care so much about plus one plus one counters today is that we are going to be playing what is pretty close to a colorless deck that features hardened scales. So Agatha's Soul Cauldron can normally tap and put one plus one plus one counter on a creature. Well, now all of a sudden, it's going to be putting two counters on instead. And as we play creatures like Hangerback, Walker, Arcbound, Ravager, Walking Ballista, all of these X creatures that enter the battlefield with counters on them, like we are going to increase those numbers and turn them from kind of mana inefficient cards to mana efficient cards. And I think at this point we should probably just take a look at the full deck list. Now, today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, as well as Cool Stuff Inc. Remember, if you need paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. So here's the deck list in all of its glory. We're going to be playing Patrick Automaton, which we already know is really strong alongside Ancient Tomb and a bunch of cheap artifacts. And there's a handful of cards here you might not be super familiar with. The Ozolith allows us to move plus one plus one counters from our creatures that die onto the Ozolith. And when we move them from the Ozolith back to another creature, Arden Scales can definitely do its thing as well, increasing that number. And Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp will let our modular abilities from Arcbound Ravager trigger an additional time. Ultimately, in addition to combat damage, our primary win condition is going to just go and be Walking Ballista. And within the context of this deck list, if we end up exiling a Walking Ballista, we can then turn any creature into Walking Ballista. So we have lines where we can do something like play a Hangerback Walker for two or three, sack it to Ravager, sack the artifacts that are made by Hangerback Walker to Ravager, and then use Ravager as Walking Ballista. Um, so we're going to have some strange lines available to us, including an actual factual infect kill, where we move plus one plus one counters to Ink Moth Nexus and then swing in for lethal this way. Um, this is a deck that I'm very excited to play with, because I've been on the wrong side of this a couple of times and I haven't quite been able to conceptually math out what my opponent was capable of doing. Um, this is definitely going to be a league where I'm going to mess some math up with like the Boz, Ozolith, Hardened Scales, Ravager, like some very weird lines are possible. Um, and I'm going to be fig figuring out all of it kind of live. Welding Jar serves as some nice protection and Urza Saga will do Urza Saga things. But like notably within this deck list, it has some very strange silver bullets that we can fetch up that can allow us to go wide or tall simultaneously. 
Um, so let's kind of see how this goes. I don't really have anything to say about the sideboard here, so let's battle. All right. Tree, cauldron, opal, animation module, have no creature other than an ink moth nexus. I need a plus one, plus one counter to get things started. I could legend rule a mox opal to put a plus one, plus one counter on an ink moth nexus. I think I'm just better off mulliganing this one. This is an unimpressive hand that I guess I'm keeping. I may be supposed to mulligan this, but I have zero reps in with this deck to see how it fares. Oh, a mirror would be interesting, but I don't think that's going to happen. This feels more unfair than what I'm doing. Dark Ritual. Am I dying to Beseech on turn one? I forgot the Bob's is legendary. I should have played out Lotus Puddle so that I held up uh, Boseju. I don't know that it would matter here, but I could potentially have messed with Lion's Eye Diamond timing. Yep. So it does a second Beseech the Mirror to mess with Storm Count. Finding a third Beseech the Mirror, which then we'll just find Tendrils. That'll do. Uh, dead on turn one. I'm pretty sure if I interrupt that at any point with... Boseju, since my opponent didn't use the LED for mana, my opponent just shifts into Gaia's Will, which also just kills me. Uh, yeah. Thorns. Mind Break Traps. Cage is okay. Surgicals are okay. Boseju will be better than Forest. If I'm playing any Forests, I'm not playing any. Oh, no, there they are. That becomes that. So Needle's pretty medium. I probably don't mess around with Welding Jar anymore. Um, that will make my Mox Opals a little worse. Animation modules are slow. Probably don't need the Ozolith. This is probably a kill my opponent with whatever so long as I don't die sort of matchup. I could go down on some number of something like Zabaz. To do something like this, my Mox Opals just get, like, really bad if I cut this many zero drops, though. And Mox Opal is a way to play Thorn on one. Maybe I get rid of some top end instead. This is 14 creatures plus Ink Moth. That's a little light. Maybe I just get rid of, like, some support. I just get rid of Zabaz completely. Oh, we're a 61 card deck list. Sure. Eh. Let's say no to this. Well, this could create a very large patchwork automaton very quickly with hardened scales, but I don't think we're keeping this hand based on aggro. God, give me a give me a fucking thorn of amethyst. I I beg you. Uh, we're going to four. Fuck. So what's the plan? I think the plan is get lucky and draw Thorn of Amethyst as my top card. I think that is fully the plan. So we're going to play Patchwork on turn one into Patchwork Lotus Petal on turn two and try to aggro my opponent down. And uh, that's what I've got. But we have just fully whiffed on like the Mind Break, Trap, Thorn side of the deck list, unfortunately. All right. I mean, we, we have fast aggro elements here. But that's not what I need in this matchup. Like, I hit my opponent for three and then five-ish, and then they're probably dead, but I think I just die before that. I just had zero interaction with my opponent. I am fine with uh, chalking up the occasional loss to random variants. All right, am I dead? Feels like I'm dead. Ball ritual, three mana. Any other ritual or a petal is four mana. Oh, it's actual infernal tutor. Sure. So going up to four mana. Uh, tendrils in graveyard already. A second beseech the mirror. Storm count is five. I'm at 16 life from Ancient Tomb, just 
by the way, for those of you uh, playing the mental game at home as my opponent beseeches again. All right, there's Gaia's will. My opponent will sack this for black, and then they can just Cabal Rit into Tendrils, and I am dead. I can see the writing on the wall. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. All right, what am I looking at here? Turn one, ancient tomb. Um, the hand's going to be a keep. This is probably a hand that... Um, Urza's Saga is really the thing that does it. I don't think I'd play Mox Opal right now in case I draw a Patchwork Automaton for next turn. Please don't be a combo deck. <laughs> hey, it's Patchwork Automaton. I don't think I'm getting to nine plus one plus one counters to do Ink Moth Kill next turn. So let's do this. Cast Patchwork Automaton. Cast Mox Opal. My opponent's not F6, so I don't think I go for immediate Pithing Needle on Polluted Delta or anything. Uh, we have very decent aggro elements going. Uh, we probably beat something like Doomsday here. If we forced an end of turn brainstorm. Oh, it's a cycle. Sure. Finding a new underground sea. Yeah, if we're playing against a fair deck like Scam, we probably... Never mind. The one ring, sure. This is probably like that weird one ring storm deck. Uh, this pithy needle is batshit insane. Ooh, hello, hardened scales. Bam, bam. Pithy needle, the one ring. Don't get to do any damage this turn. Uh. I probably have a kill a bunch of different ways next turn. Huh, needle on a Delta would have gotten that land. Well, let's make an Urza Saga token. Sure. Just preemptively fetching, I guess, to play around a second Pithing Needle. Sure. So let's activate this. What am I? What am I even playing around here? Like, do I just grab a Welding Jar? Just grab Welding Jar and play around removal. So this is the newly controlled one. This is not the newly controlled one. I'll activate that. Uh, this is already lethal, so I don't need to uh, take any actions here, right? 9, 10, 15, 16. Orcish Bowmasters. Sure. I would like to ping an Arcbound Ravager. Um, let's float a mana here. I'm just going to move counters to here and get an infect kill, I think. Let's animate this. I'll sack an artifact. That's two plus one plus one counters. I'll sack an artifact. That's five. I'll sack an artifact. That's seven. I'll sack an artifact. That's nine. Now I sack this Ravager to the other Ravager. We'll then modular the counters onto Ink Moth Nexus for a flying infect based kill that fizzles the Bowmaster's trigger and is held up with protection. All right, that was cool. So my opponent has shown me. Underground Seas, One Ring, Lorien Reveal, Bowmaster, Dark Ritual. Did Jax's deck have Bowmasters? I think this is a little different. Uh, Jax's Storm deck did not have Bowmasters. I'm a little worried that if I go too far down the anti-Storm route and I'm wrong, that my deck sucks. Like, this legitimately could just be a Dark Ritual control deck list, and Lorien Reveal and the One Ring make up for the fact that your 
playing Dark Ritual. In which case, boring in the Mind Break Traps would be really bad. I'm going to do this, though. I think I am going down on these. If my opponent is Storm, I'm expecting more bounce than anything else. Um, go down an animation module. Maybe both. That seems cuttable. Um, at this point, I'm low on time. I'm going to do that. Tree, Mox, Welding Jar, Thorn. Uh, if we are playing against Storm, this is a reasonable start. If this is not actually a Storm deck, this is a pretty weak start. Cool. Yaw. Yaw. Opal is on. I don't think I waste an Opal to play around days, since I have Ravager to sacrifice the Opal in the next turn cycle. Sure. Thorn backed by Welding Jar is pretty legit. Force Pitching Force. Sure. A new Thorn. Don't mind if I do. Um, am I supposed to play Ravager first? Like, play Ravager, sack Mox Opal, play new Mox Opal, then play Thorn? I'm probably supposed to do that. Um, a little weird. Like, this is a weird Bowmaster spot that I've just created. Uh, didn't matter. Sure. Reattempt Thorn. Fatal Push. Is that worth the Welding Jar? I think that's worth the Welding Jar. Let's regen. Ooh. Okay, it was just a fetch in response. That's fine. Yeah, are we actually playing against a control deck, or is this combo? Like... It is becoming more difficult for me to tell. All right. Uh, hit you. You're at 16. Because of Patchwork Automaton, I think I hold this. Like, I'm not hurting on mana right now. And I've got a couple artifacts that I can sacrifice if I need to play around some sort of Lightning Bolt-style card. Mystic Sanctuary getting back Fatal Push. Sure. Okay. Well, that's mighty rude. Still unsure whether or not I'm playing against a control deck or a combo deck. Doesn't matter, Urza Saga. Um, now I'll play Petal. So things get a lot better for me once I put another construct into play. And, like, my Ravager can start moving counters around if I need to. The Shouldred is going to do... Serious, serious work. Yeah, that's an... That, oh, that's the same Fatal Push. Sure. Nothing to put the modular counters on. I have one, two, three... I have four artifacts as of right now. Hey. Don't mind that. Bam. Now the Shouldered can't attack anymore, which is great. Um, Still doing work, though. Sure. What is my opponent playing? I like legit don't know. It feels like this is control, but sure. Let's activate one of these. Figure out what on earth I'm getting. Oh, I did that in response to a shouldered trigger. Sure. That's fine. I don't have a shadow spear, which is something that I would really like. I probably just like pithing needle the one ring. Preemptively. I think that's better than Haywire might. The uh, one ring. Bam. Bam. Go to combat. Swing on in. No blocks. Um, dress down is a thing. I get two more points of damage in. If I do this, though, I think those points matter a lot. Then we'll just animate this paying for itself here to just increase my artifact count. And then it's more likely that my opponent ends up dead next turn. Cool, cool. Hercules recall. Fuck. Sure. What a blowout. So I eat four damage here. Let's meet a two. So, like, is my opponent a control deck or a combo deck? Still kind of unsure. So, make a token. 
Good God. That's brutal. All right. The 1-1 one, one is also effectively a 1-1. One, one. Seems like my opponent is blue-black control. All right. From this board, I don't realistically think I have outs. So let's not do this anymore. So if my opponent is trying to one for one me going wide with animation module is fine welding jar is fine again i think we probably go back to the game one configuration and just don't play thorn and just stay as threat dense as possible yeah blue black death shadow is common blue black scam is common this is something else and they're not in a third color like grixis or Things like Pyroblast, which is what is throwing me off. Ah, Hercules was rough. Turn one, patchwork. Turn two, play a couple of things. Yeah, this is fine. Patchwork Automaton specifically has Ward, making it a pain in the ass to answer early on. All right. Patchwork. And then if I play Animation Module, I can try to go wide relatively easily. So like, play animation module, this triggers, it's in play, cast Zabaz, get a plus one plus one counter, which triggers this, which I will pay for, and now we're trying to go wide, can't pay a second time, uh, bash in for three, opponent's at 17, facing down five power, we've got Dark Ritual Shouldered, Dark Ritual, One Ring, as things that can happen. Ooh. Uh, that does that does stuff. So now I can just add a plus one, plus one counter to one of these two creatures. Probably the one that has Ward. Um, although if my opponent plays Bowmasters. Okay, no blocks. Um, I think I'm just going to make this thing scarier. All right. I don't have extra mana here. Um, yeah, but uh, Hardened Scales plus Animation Module is going to be a lot of damage. So if my opponent ends up killing Zabaz, goddamn Hercules Recall. Fuck you. Hate that card. I mean, that, that just undid three of my turns worth of work, which matters a lot since I'm an Ancient Tomb deck list. Sure. Let's let's start here again. That's a force of will. Then I think I play the Ozolith next. And then Zabaz. And I can play the bouncing counter game as I need to. And any one ones I play are now insulated from Orcish Bowmaster pings. Sure. So we move counters here. Uh, these move at beginning of combat? Yes. Sure. Work on going wide? I think work on going wide here. The replay animation module. Do a walking ballista for X is 1, which is really like X is 2. Then pay to do this. We'll go to combat. We'll move these counters to the walking ballista. Yep. Don't have extra mana here. But I think that's fine. Very nice. Bowmasters is fine. I guess I could have removed one counter to keep my opponent from getting an orc, but I can do that at any time. The so dress down shuts off my ability to ping. Do I care? I don't think I care since I just have another walking ballista coming. Yeah, you got it. Sure. Brainstorm's fine. Okay, uh, we win the match here. Still feel weird about that one. Okay. Um, I can't play Urza Saga on one. I can tree opal petal ballista on one and then follow up with Urza Saga the following turn. That's fine. And I just treat turn one as increasing my artifact count meaningfully. And the game is actually just about Urza Saga. Tree. Petal. 
Opal. And on a Mac Warrior. Or X is one. All right. I don't know that I'm in love with this start, but as we know from countless leagues on this channel, Urza Saga is a hell of a drug. Ooh, uh, that's very good. We'll see if it's fast enough. Ooh, okay, so we're probably playing against a Moon Stompy decklist, uh, which means Urza Saga is a little scary to play. I'm doing it anyway, as it is my best play, um, but I might get Sinkhold next turn. And that's something that I've just got to live with. All right, there's the city. There's the sinkhole. We knew it was a risk. We did it anyway. Nice. So now I get to Patchwork Automaton. Play Ink Moth. Cast this. Let it get countered by Chalice. And scale up Patchwork Automaton by two. And then next turn, if I want, I can 4-mana, put counters on Walking Ballista, and then kill Magus of the Moon. Ooh, it is a green-red initiative decklist. Fable's fine. I'm not even sure that I want to remove the Magus of the Moon, honestly. Okay, maybe I want to remove the Magus of the Moon. I guess my attack with Walking Ballista is kind of free. Um, uh, no, that's not true. Like, they could block with this when I actually want to kill this. All right, so we'll do this. Ping Magus. Ping Magus, which is awkward because it puts my opponent back on four mana, which I don't love. But here we are, as I might be facing down something like a Minskin Boo immediately, which is awkward. I guess this always could attack, so my opponent always had four mana. I got to loot a dead Chrome Mox and a very slow Once Upon a Time. Fable definitely did some work there. It is initiative o'clock. Um, I can always take the initiative with Ink Moth Nexus. Like, that will always be an option afforded to me. But it maybe comes at the cost of an Urza Saga token. Zabaz. I think at the end of the day, I'm trying to have the bigger cards. So let's just cast Zabaz, scale up Patchwork Automaton by two. Destroys artifacts I control. I'll attack with the Patchwork Automaton. My opponent can throw away a body to hold the initiative if they want, or they can take five. Oh. That doesn't feel right. That does not feel right at all. So. I kill Undermount Adventurer. One damage is marked on this. I think I'll happily just clear the board, leave myself with an Urza Saga token, Zabaz, Ink Moth, and a second Urza Saga token to their empty board. Like, if they specifically have Minskin Boo and they were trying to get Walking Ballista off the board, um, this is an acceptable play. Otherwise, this feels a little rough. All right, what instant speed nonsense do you have? Oh, Seiju. That's interesting. Uh, I think I'm leaving up Mox Opal for the white mana for flying. I think that's what I'm doing. I can Pithing Needle Reflection of Kiki Jiki. I don't hate that. Stops Fury, copy Fury nonsense. Bam. Uh, let's fly for white mana. I'm going to just play this. I don't think I need. Zero drops this game. Send them. Um, after no blockers, let's animate this for one additional damage. Sure. I'll take the initiative, get a forest. Call it a turn. Oh, wow. Af like, with six cards in hand and a looting, their best play was just once upon a time? I mean, they found Fury, which is nice, but I'm just a little surprised is all sure. so we preemptively played around that so my opponent couldn't copy it then we'll modular the counters onto a construct so we're pretty far ahead in terms of combat math here we will forge 
two plus one plus one counters. Both of these live through fury. New Zabaz. Play Zabaz. Activate Ink Moth. Okay, yeah. I feel like we won that one on the back of my opponent's deck, just failing them, though. Rather than the strength of my deck. Um, I would like Dismember as efficient answers to my opponent's initiative creatures. Chalice on zero can do stuff. Chalice on one can do stuff. Uh, I didn't really consider it this game. Boseju can also get rid of Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's probably worth doing that swap at the very least. What's my least valuable thing here? I can maybe get away with... One fewer copy of one of these. Go down an animation module. I don't know that this game is long enough for Agatha's Soul Cauldron to be insane. Like, it kind of feels like this one is going to go fast. I haven't drawn an Agatha's Soul Cauldron yet. I don't think in any of my hands. Turn one scales. Turn two automaton. Turn three... Probably play two artifacts and have a very, very large patchwork automaton that probably permanently is played around Fury, but this hand might not be fast enough. My opponent's really good at playing a four drop on turn one. I think I would keep this on the play. I don't know that it's fast enough on the draw. Uh, and doesn't do anything. Let's go to five. Good grief. All right. Turn one Boseju, Arden Scales. Turn to land drop, probably walker. Um, it's going to be a keep. What's the second card that goes back? It's probably hard for me to play animation module with this hand. Um, this hand's pretty bad. It plays around Chalice on Zero relatively well, which is, I guess, a thing. Human? It's probably sideboard Magus of the Moon which is rough, like really rough. I need to play my green card while my green card is playable, but then I can play Hangerback Walker into Hangerback Walker for the following turn cycles. When it paused at my end step, they could have Force of Vigor. That is Magus of the Moon. Urza Saga is off. I've got Dismembers I can draw to get rid of this. Fuck. Ah. Man. Um, this would have been an insane hand in a lot of other circumstances. Here's the good news, though. The good news is that my opponent currently does not have green mana showing. So Minsk and Boo and Undermountain Adventure are currently off the table. Do you have Force of Vigor? You do have Force of Vigor. Pitching an Undermountain Adventure, which is not currently castable. Um... The next Hangerback Walker is not going to be nearly as good without the Harden Scales, but at least the Magus of the Moon can't attack. Meltdown. Um, I don't know if my opponent was supposed to cast that Meltdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I dismember. Float one mana here. Play this. Play this for one. Yes. All right. There's four life. Play Urza's Saga. Cast Hangerback Walker. My opponent may be fully off real colored mana now. And like might, yeah, they might lose this game to their own mana base now. Um, so two mana Urza Saga activate. Let's just play Forest. And I'm going to want to stack up the counters on this rather than attacking for one. Um, yeah, in my most recent episode of the Eternal Glory podcast, I talked about how like the mana base of this deck is. <laughs> oh, that's not colored mana either. Um, is surprisingly bad. That's another human. Okay. They've got to play at least. Sure, I will be able to go wide of that and take the initiative. This does give them one color of mana. They're going for the green. So let's stack up here. Make a token. Back up. Increase the counters. A wire might. I don't expect to need the green immediately. Let's go one, two. 
secondary token. I really wish I had a Shadow Spear in this deck list. What do I want? Animation module can allow me to continue to go wide. Ozolith is interesting. A little choked on colored mana for Zabaz. I'm going to go animation module. All right. I'll play Urza's Saga. Cast a Haywire Might. I think this is fine. But barely. Put the plus one, plus one counter here. Pay for this ability. Bash in for six. And I'll grab the initiative. Getting my last forest out of my deck. Just confirm I've already played a land. Uh, we'll see if my opponent can find a way to string this together. Uh, it's not impossible. Yeah, Fury can do some gross things here. I'm in the business of trying to kill my opponent before they can get to trap now. Uh, yep. So do you have like a second Fury? Cavern goes on Giant for Undermountain Adventurer here. Okay, that can allow them to forge pre-combat. Sure. But now they have the initiative, so they're not taking it in combat? Sure. Can I kill my opponent on their turn? Maybe. Uh, regardless, I think I'm taking the hit in an attempt to try. I'd like to be able to sacrifice my Hangerback Walker. I didn't have colored mana for Zabaz. Ravager. <laughs> That'll do. Yep. All right. Arcbound Ravager. So I pay mana to make a thing. That grows these. Yes, that's fine. Yes, I go to combat. I attack with two constructs. One doesn't get blocked. And then I sacrifice Hangerback Walker. Send it. Send it. On it blocks one. Make a mana with Urza Saga. Do this. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, so now sacrifice Hangerback Walker. These are now 10 tens. Yes, the second time. This is now an 11 11, meaning that this is lethal. Okay, that was really cool. Okay, um, do I play Patchwork Automaton on turn one or not? If I play Patchwork on one, I play Patchwork on one. I hold Zabaz and Mox Opal till turn two. I can turn on Mox Opal. Hmm. I don't think I get to do this where I get to trigger Patchwork Automaton the maximum number of times while also playing Urza Saga on turn one. I think I want Patchwork Automaton to attack on turn two. But I don't think I want to do anything else yet. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, let's talk about this. Okay. So, this, 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 always yield. Ooh, got a response. Sure. But we're gonna aggro fast, that's for damn sure. So, this, pay, tap this, Zabaz. Can't afford to pay. Can't afford to pay. I mean, I'm attacking for seven on turn two. This is about the best I can do to race combo. Um, without mathing it out, I think my opponent's dead next turn. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, activate animation module 12, 13. Or 10, 11, 12, rather. Uh, yeah, my opponent gets goldfish turn three, so they have to goldfish me turn two. Uh, looking like a storm. Oh, okay. Not dead. End step? End step dress down. Sure. Uh, but animation module just does it. Onboard tricks are good. Send them. After no blocks, uh, put another counter on, I guess, Zabaz. Bam. Uh, yeah, that's worth the life. And we killed our combo opponent on turn three. Cool, cool. Game one dress down, though. Um, let's do this and these. 
Don't know, guaranteed, whether or not Needle has good targets as of right now. I'm going to go Agatha's Soul Cauldron out for being slow-ish. Probably keep Haywire Might. I'd probably go down on some of the, like, Ozolith animation module sort of stuff, and then maybe cut one top-end card. Um, let's also do this in case that's relevant. And then when we see a little bit more of my opponent's deck, if we end up going to a game three... Uh, yeah, this is fine. I can decide what to do from there. We're hoping to dodge turn one Thoughtseize taking this Thorn. I guess we're also hoping to dodge, uh, you know, dying on turn one. Um, I think I'm going to play Ancient Tomb Lotus Petal, then Thorn, rather than lead on Urza's Saga and Lotus Petal. Um, this way I can play a Thorn around a daze in case that's a thing that matters. Okay. That's a trap. And just some selection. Are we resolving? We're resolving. Okay, looks like my opponent's just got to land for turn. Ooh, I like that. Uh, don't Hercules recall me, I guess. It's three mana, but is very strong. Sure. What are you doing? Are you decaying the first one? Nope, they're both in play. Um, an Echoing Truth or a Hercules now costs four mana, uh, which my opponent does not have. So, uh, is it worth giving up my Lotus Petal to cast Patchwork Automaton? Alternatively, do I play Arcbound Ravager so that if my opponent targets a Thorn with Echoing Truth, I can fizzle the target? Yeah, I think I like Ravager. It's a very specific thing that I'm playing around, but... It seems like one of my opponent's primary outs, so might as well play around it. Make token. Draw. Ow, my life total. Make token. Shit, I kind of want to haywire might that lotus petal. Kind of aggro. I like it. Tree's fine. Swing in for nine. Put my opponent to nine. Upkeep. Goodbye, Lotus Petal. Took it out. Which I imagine means we're done here. Alrighty. That'll do. GG's. Okay, I gotta think about this one for a second. So I lead on Saga and dedicate my mana towards Ancient Tomb. I can play Opal Petal, activate Urza Saga, then Mox Opal Scales. Scales isn't doing a lot right now. I'm going to keep my hand. I don't think I blow pedal to play scales on one, uh, which can result in like it being thought seized or something. But I think that's fine. My turn two is pretty legitimately strong. Tundra, Ponder, sure. If we're playing against a control deck, like... Multiple Urza Sagas on this start probably buries my opponent. Um, save for some, like, Dress Down Supreme Verdict type cards. That could still do some serious work. Zabaz. Hello. Tomb. Battle. Opal. Sorcery Speed activate this to turn on Metalcraft. Play Hardened Scales. I think it's worth putting the extra body into play very aggressively here at the cost of Lotus Petal. It shrinks the construct by one. Oh, Daze, sure. What does Tundra Daze represent? Uh, maybe Breakfast? Ephelid Breakfast is like a very real deck that my opponent could be playing. Like, I could call shot Pithing Needle something here. I don't know that that is correct, though. Because I could just miss. I could pick up a new Zabaz and just keep the pressure up. Or I could pick up, like, a Haywire Mite. I think I'm going to keep the pressure up and just try to end this game before my opponent can do anything. Um... Am I interested in destroying my own Zabaz? I don't think so. 
Get in for five. And attempt to go for lethal next turn. I think if my opponent plays a creature, they're forced to chump block. Like, an Urza Saga is plus one to these. Playing Inkbot and animating is plus one. Uh, dress down would suck. Kicked Orem's chant. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I have definite lethal on board next turn. We'll see if my opponent has the entire combo. Uh, that probably means that my opponent can't combo off anymore. They would need Cephalid Illusionist plus like a Shuko or Nomads in core. So I think we're good. Uh, yep. Uh, we are getting our opponents dead here. So, Orm's Chant is a thing. Orm's Chant makes some of my interaction, like Mindbreak Trap and Surgical, worse. I probably still play some amount of that. I don't think I'm interested in Welding Jar. I think Forest becomes Boseju. I can probably trim an animation module without missing anything. Is this Leaves play? Leaves the battlefield. I've got to make some slots here. I think I want six to seven cards here. Haywire Might and Pithing Needle are both like kind of medium. I can't cut Soul Cauldron here. It is just a way to take the Thassa's Oracle out of Graveyard if my opponent is comboing. I don't think I'm going with Thorns especially for my game on the draw here. And I can probably do that. The thing about Cephalic Breakfast is that if you lean too heavily in one direction or another, there's a good chance that you just die. All right, how fast is this hand? So, Arden Scales, Ancient, turn one. Ancient turn, Ancient Tomb, turn two. Play Hangerback Walker, which is effectively X is two. Don't have Metalcraft for these Mox Opals. Um, I'm going to ship this one. This is turn one, play scales. Turn two, play patchwork automaton. Opal, opal, scale it up immediately. This is just an aggro hand. This one doesn't disrupt. This is probably a better plan than the average five A's. Uh, but it's not great. Just full stop, it is not great. Sure. So we have some defense against a combo attempt now. And I don't think I'm losing to fair Urza Saga tokens. I think this patchwork automaton, if it resolves, will scale up hard enough that it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, that's very scary. Uh, we'll see if surgical is enough. Oh. Well... It's not like I'm not going to do it, right? It slows me down, but I don't think I can say no to this. We just destroy that land so they can't get a Shuko and goldfish me. Uh, yep, that's fine. No Metalcraft for Mox Opal means that I'm not playing around days. Uh, yep, that's fine. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, the Oracle is in the graveyard. I'm going to wait till my opponent uh, is at the point of decking themselves, though. Or alternatively, casting a Cabal Therapy. Alright, so now I will attempt the Surgical on the Thassa's Oracle. And uh, see if I get eaten by a daze here. One has got Serenity that I have to watch out for. Alright, uh, take your Thassa's Oracle. And you don't have enough left to aggro me out over the course of two turns. So we're good. Folks, that was a very impressive and very fast 4-1 league. Wow. So it's pretty rare in Legacy that you actually just get to kind of play aggro. But that's really what this deck list is, right? If we take a look at game one disruption, there's, there's just really not any. And our sideboard is very, very tuned towards respecting the combo decks in the post-sideboard games with the hope that in game one, we just get to kill the opponent. 
I will say some of these cards overperformed. Uh, animation module did much better than I was expecting. And Zabaz did better this league in most of the other le- than in most of the other leagues that I played with Zabaz. Hardened scale starting Zabaz out as a 2-2 baseline helps out a lot. Uh, we never drew Agatha's Soul Cauldron today, just not even once. But conceptually, playing that out for two mana and then just tapping it every turn to add at minimum one plus one plus one counter and probably more seems really strong. So I'm sad that we didn't draw it, but this deck slaps. Like this, this should be on your radar as a, like a sleeper pick in Legacy. I will say. I don't know that I want to, say, play this at somewhere like Eternal Weekend, where, you know, one or two copies of Meltdown or Serenity resolving over the course of, you know, 11 rounds could just ruin your entire tournament. But this deck is good. This one gets a huge thumbs up from me. Uh, With that being said, if you need any cards for this, check out Cool Stuff Inc. Use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. And folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya.